My guest tonight was a member of the legendary group, The Monkees. He has since gone on to executive produce such movies as Repo Man and Tape Heads, and he has just released a new album entitled The Garden. Here he comes, walking down our hall, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Nesmith. Some shirt there, mister. Pineapples. <laughs> pineapples and uh, more pineapples. Where did I pick me up one of those is the question. This is, uh, this is from a shop down in Venice. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Do you the, live here in Los Angeles? Well, a little bit of the time. I live out in Santa Fe, outside of Santa Fe mostly. I try to get over here because the longer you live in New Mexico, the more turquoise you tend to buy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I notice you're already doing a little yeah, bit right here. Yeah, they get here. bigger and bigger, you know. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to end up like one of those guys in a bolo tie, <laughs> yeah. you know. Rock talking, the size of a football. Talking it's... about UFO on cable access. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I was a big uh, Monkees fan when I was a kid, and I want to talk about your new CD, but let's do talk about the, uh, the Monkees. There's been so many misconceptions and so many uh, discussions well, about what went on. Well, give me a couple of the misconceptions. Well, let me give you a couple ideas Just here, tell me, Michael. like, one misconception First of all, was. let me ask you, was it, was it a good experience for you when for you me, it was, a, it was For me, it was very good. There is some Amar chord, you know, I mean, grown, I'm grown now, up. Now, see, I don't know what Amar chord means, so... Well, it means I remember, and it's from a Fellini film, which kind of colors the past so that you remember the good stuff. We tend not to remember the pain. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, the, well, part of the misconceptions or some of the things that people talked about said that you didn't want to go back and play with the monkeys, and that's why for 20 years you guys were split apart. Well, I, you know, the press, the press just had a field day with the monkeys by and large. I mean, one of the great and most peculiar things that ever happened to me mm -hmm. was when the media began to report with genuine alarm that the monkeys were not a real band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this was huge news, right? Big news, yeah. yeah. I kept thinking, well, gee, I <clears throat> and, uh, and I guess it was the same guy that, that, that reported that Sally Field couldn't fly because mm -hmm. there was <laughs> sort of the same dynamic at work. So it's this TV show about a make-up, make-believe band, and uh, then th so they, they started in on that and, and I was absolutely perplexed. Mm -hmm. I had no idea where this was coming from. Of course, it wasn't a real band. It was a TV show. How did you all get along? The four of us? Yeah. Oh, very well. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. We were, we were kids and, and uh, yeah, enjoyed. That's what I mean. Is, is <clears throat> at that time in your life and that being in the limelight like that, I would think there would be a little bit of squabbling or, or some problems. No? Well, we were all actors. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we, you know, there was a certain professional level of getting along. And uh, we made, you know, we made friends like you do working with people over a period of time. I, I, you know, I'm very fond of everybody. I mean, people, you know, you want to know who my favorite monkey is? It's Mickey. Okay, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, but, but. Uh, See, I thought, I thought for sure you'd go with Michael on uh, that no, one. No. <laughs> I, I never liked his hat thing. I did, do you remember this? This is back in uh, September 9, <clears throat> 1965. This is the actual. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll use it's the here. actual variety. This is the actual variety article. Madness auditions, uh, folk and roll musician singers for acting roles in new TV series, running parts for four insane boys. Spirited. 17 to 21, right there. But, but, but wait, 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 uh, great, great, great. Yeah, sorry. What? Spirited Ben Franks types. Yeah, what, what is that talking ha -ha, about? Ha-ha, see, Americana. Uh-huh. Well, ben, Franks is, ben Franks is a joint down on Sunset Boulevard. Right. You remember this? You know this coffee yeah, shop? Yeah, yeah, I do, standing? actually, yeah. And people were down there wearing granny glasses in the 60s. Mm -hmm. This was, uh, this was uh, the shibboleth. Uh -huh. Granny glasses was the way into the alternative culture in the 60s. Uh -huh. I didn't have any granny glasses. The Reverend Fraser Mohawk brought me the advertisement. And, How is and the Reverend Fraser Mohawk? <laughs> well, <clears throat> first of all, he sends his regards. Mm -hmm. Good. He says he's sorry about that whole thing with the couch yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And, 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 and he just wished it hadn't happened. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Were you nervous when you went into the uh, the audition, or did you even care that you well, got this? Well, you know, or not? I was working as a musician, and I had no idea that I would come out and get in a television show. But I liked television. I liked the idea of doing it, and I liked the idea of the show. And then when I met the people, the producers and the directors and stuff that were around, I thought, hmm, this could be good. This mm -hmm. could be a good time. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it was steady work. Let's not put this completely by. Let me ask you this. I know this has nothing to do uh, really with the monkeys, but your mom invented liquid paper. This is true. Uh, 
huge revolutionary thing, right? Well, wait a minute. <laughs> World War II was revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> what? The telephone was revolutionary. Did, did she cut? This corrects things up. Have you used this stuff, Greg? <laughs> you know, Actually, it just paints stuff out, is all this does. <laughs> uh, do, do you remember when she came to you and said, I, I've come up with this thing? Well, did she, you was think, working, yeah, she was working as a secretary, and she, she was uh, doing graphics art uh, work at night, and she paints mistakes out at night mm -hmm. uh, in the graphic stuff. So she figured, well, I'll apply this to typing, mm -hmm. and painted out the, the stuff. And... Um, uh, you know, the secretary sitting next to her says, gee, Betty, that's great. Could, could I have some of that? And she says, sure, for a dollar. Right. We're going to do a quick break. We'll be right back with Michael Nesmith after that. Nesmith here, you've, uh, you've always been kind of a media visionary. They told me, in fact, that uh, you in some ways helped create MTV. Well, in some ways, I, I was part of the uh, original concept of it. Mm -hmm. How yeah. so? Well, um, I, was, I had done a music video in 76 with a friend of mine, Bill Deere. And this was is a, before MTV or anybody oh, who yeah. knows about music videos. Yeah, no, these were, these were played over in Europe uh, on these little clip shows. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me to do it because my record was coming out over there. So I did it. A guy named Bill Deere and I did it together. And, and uh, Bill was a commercial director. Mm -hmm. So he, was, uh, he had a kind of a sensibility about cutting things together fast. I'm coming out of the monkeys mm -hmm. and, and learned a little bit of filming from those guys. Right. So we end up with this music video. And when I'm over there watching the shows, I think, well, it would make an interesting idea for a 24-hour day music thing. Mm -hmm. Came back here and just, you know, cutting right down to it, sold the idea to Warner Brothers. And then they said, well, oh, this works great. You want to come back and run it? And I said, no. And so a fellow named Bob Pittman, who's mm -hmm. really the father of mm -hmm. it. I mean, he was a guy that was the architect of it. You know, he took that idea. He was the guy who took all the money for the idea. <laughs> he took a bunch. Yeah. He did well. Uh, you, Happy for old Bob. Yeah, we all are, I think. <laughs> This is your uh, this is your new uh, CD new here, CD, yeah. and they tell me this is like CD-ROM also. It is. It's this is the not the CD-ROM, but that's yeah. but it it is in, in CD-ROM. Now, what does that mean? It's in, I, I'm, you're talking to the most computer illiterate person you could possibly talk to. What does that oh, mean? It's in CD-ROM. Well, we're in trouble. Then. We are. Okay. <laughs> well, we we can go long by about three or four hours tonight on the show. Go ahead. Well, what what it, it, you know. Years ago, 20 years ago, what, what, I, what I've done over the years, just hang on to the stuff that I've made. Mm -hmm. And uh, 20 years ago, I did a, did a project called The Prison. And The Prison is a book and a record. And you put the record on and you read the book. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of a media experience. It was nominated and won, I think, in many critics' polls, uh, the award for the worst concept album of all time. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. I just... So I, thought, <clears throat> so I thought, I thought, well, then I should do a follow-up. <laughs> of course. This, I mean, this, your window's right, wide right. open because there. Because a sequel has got to work. <laughs> so, so <laughs> the, the garden is that, except now, with the garden, I have more technology available to me. Right. And instead of the, the text being just on a book, I'm able to use part of the CD as data storage. Mm -hmm and access it through a computer, and thus the CD-ROMs. Uh, this music that we're going to hear here, obviously, is uh, all your own original stuff. This on the garden? Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, was any of the, uh, how much of the monkey stuff was original? Oh, uh, to me, did I write? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, 10%? Did they not want you guys to write your own music? Oh, con or? no, au contraire. Au contraire? Uh, no, they wanted, they, they were happy for us to involve ourselves as much as possible in, uh, in making the music for the show. We, you know, nobody thought we would. Uh, we, we were just soundtracks, so we thought. But as it, as it went along, <laughs> as it went along, we decided, well, shoot, we can play. We might as well. Uh -huh. Hence, uh, very lo a lot of confusion about the Monkees, which was a make-believe band that actually played. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Give me uh... one of those looks, Greg. <laughs> Give me one of those looks. Here is, uh, this is, I gotta do this, because you're gonna play, are you gonna do a little song for us here tonight? Well, listen, is this the, is this the question from the guest? This is the, the guest before? from the previous uh, question from the previous night's guest. Gary I Ducey. happen to have an answer. You have an answer? Should I just give the answer? Well, the the answer, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because 
Before the, you give me the, the question. Answer, please. Okay. Oh, great one. It was. Uh, oh, pineapple moose breath. <laughs> shirt wearing. <laughs> Go Moose ahead. breath? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was a reach there. But <laughs> yeah, I know. Just <laughs> right, let's clear answer? it up anyway. Uh, little tiny packets of Chinese mustard. Little tiny packets of Chinese mustard. <laughs> what is your favorite smell? Uh, when well, it's did not you as funny as it could have been, is what it? What is your favorite smell, and when did you first experience oh, the sensation? This, well, wait a minute. Let's do Very it again. Let's do it again. Let's uh, do it again. Let's not. Okay. <laughs> uh, look, you're going to play a little something for us, aren't you? I'll be happy Michael to. Nesmus with us. Uh, we're going to do a quick break and be back right after this. So, Bob Cox is here Monday night. Good night. From his album, pretty much your standard ranch stash. Here's Michael Nesmith with some of Shelley's blues. Tell me just one more time the reasons why you must leave. Tell me once more why you're sure you don't need me. Tell me again, but don't think that you'll convince me. You said before falling in love again, you'd rather be dead. Cause when someone breaks your heart, you cry your eyes red But there's nothing so hard about the life that you've lived Cause as far as I can see There's no reason for goodbyes You're just running scared That's something I won't buy So Nothing to show but more blues And all this talk about leaving Is strictly bad news So you settle down Stay with the man that loves you Cause as far as I can see There's no reason for goodbye You're just running scared and that's something I won't buy So you lose I won't let you go with nothing to show But more blues And all this talk about leaving Is strictly bad news So you settle down Stay with the man that loves you Yes, you settle down and stay with the man that loves you. Oh, you settle down and stay with me. <laughs> Michael, that was great. Thank you. That's going to do it for us, folks. We'll say goodnight. See you Monday with Bob Costas. Bye-bye. Real treat tonight, ladies and gentlemen.